Hello and welcome to Channel Sport on Sunday. I am Ken Ochonogo. Uh, uh, it comes to those times in the life of a man that, you know, uh, you finish a stage. I think it was Shakespeare that said the world is, is a stage and we um, men and women come in and play their own part. Yes, he came in, he played his own part and three days ago, he departed Mother Earth. He was a friend of the house. He was an icon. He was uh, um, a legend, uh, an administrator, a coach, a mentor. Uh, uh, what do you say of, uh, of him that, you know, some other persons, you know, I wouldn't have had? Uh, he was headstrong, principled, uh, technical, stylish. Uh, he, he, has, he has a way, uh, you know, uh, with the game. He, he, he believed in the purity of the game. Uh, he, he moved on on a lot of things. Uh, he was here yeah, because he was part of the Troika, the part of the Triumvirate, the part uh, of the Musketeer, those that, yes, that when Nigeria was at that brink, was, you know, almost not qualifying for the World Cup, we look back in, like we say in the local palace. What did you define Go Sokoto? He did for Shoku, he did for inside your Shokoto. We came to our Shokoto and we called upon them. We called up upon Amodu Shuaibu. We called upon Stephen Keshi. And yes, we, talk, we called upon the man we are talking about. The man they call the Jogo Bonito. The man they used to call the Jogo Bonito. Yes, Joseph Eriko. We call him, I call him Eriko. And when he was here, you know, I tell you this, the place was filled with laughter. He departed Mother Earth. But today, we are devoting a chunk of this show to the memory, to the man who lived so well, to the man who served Nigeria so well, and I do not know if Nigeria served him well. I want to see if we can get, uh, uh, go back to uh, uh, 2016, you know, uh, that was before 2016, when he was here. Let us see, let us try and see and hear from, uh, hear from Joseph Erico. Mali, 2002. Mali, 2002. Mali. You were the assistant coach. Right. Uh, Amadou Shab was the coach. Right. Keshi, assistant coach. Yeah. Um, you guys came back with the bronze. Right. And the team, the coaching, the team and the, everything was dissolved. As you were asked to go. Uh, where do you think, what do you think happened? Oh, well, uh, I'll put it in a very uh, uh, brief um, stage. Um, in a nutshell, let me put it to be precise. You see, in my country, where you have people that tell you the truth, but they don't, but they don't like them. We like people who daily darling with you when you come on. There are people that are not gullible, are not welcome. You just say yes, sir. What you, whatever you say, go there, yes, sir. Do this, yes, sir. Do that, yes, sir. No, once you have an idea. To present or to counter what the big boss says, you are not good for the system. You see, we had a team. We created a team out of that team where you cannot penetrate. You get to Shaibu, you hear the same, you go to Eriko, you go to Keshi, even Oyeriko that was there as a security man, the same, the same, we were speaking the same language, even with the players, we were ready to go. Because that team, that Mali team could have taken us into the World Cup which was the last stage of the players, most of the players then. So we had to bring them and blend them up with the younger ones. Just exactly what the Ivorians have just done. Because they've come a very long way. You can imagine the 23 years ago, and I think uh, we won the Nations Cup last year after 20 something after years. After 19 years. After 19 years. years. Yeah. So if, you, if we, that, whenever this happens, there, is, there will be a problem. They want to scuttle that team. Nobody knows. Why they do that? But I'm telling you, the only problem I have seen having worked there is whenever you cannot penetrate, you want to scuttle it. Whatever you cannot penetrate, you want to scuttle it. That was the word, his words when he was here. That was in, that was in, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, after uh, the, Ivorian, uh, the Ivorians won uh, uh, the Nations Cup after so many trials. Uh, today, uh, I reached out to one of his, uh, one of those kids then he mentored, who is now a man who has also served Nigeria in almost all capacities. And then he says, can, I say, can we do an interview? Can, we, can I talk with you on phone? He said, no. For Erico, I will be in the studio. 
uh, uh, we also, I also spoke to somebody else. And he said, yes, I will join you from Belgium. But let us start from the house. Because our Jonathan Akwabori is here. Jonathan. Good morning. That is your coach. But that was, he was. I was speaking of Eriko in the past. It's, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate. But, you know, and looking at him from those pictures there, it gives me goose, goosebumps. Because... Uh, uh, my early career, when it started, uh, he, he played a very, very big role uh, in my career. Um, he was one of those few people who, who would give a young player um, his time that he deserves on the field in training. And he would watch you develop exactly what you see in Europe. You know, he had that. And even from the way we played football, you would see he wanted something. And if he doesn't, or if you're not doing it correctly, he, has, he will stop everybody and explain to you again on the field and say, okay, this is what I want. You have skills, you have everything, but you have to arrange yourselves like this to achieve what I really want us to do. Yes, uh, 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 he will stop everything. He will work on you technically. He will tell you. I, I, I think that is a definition. That is a true definition of coaching because they say you have coaches and you have managers. But this is a kind. Uh, 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 he's talking about that is what people talk about. Pep Guardiola. Uh, uh, you know, uh, was it uh, uh, Larry Sane who is saying he will even when you think you have improved, he kept on working on you. I don't know if we can go to Belgium. If we can go to Belgium, if it is true, so we we are uh, uh, we. We will join up with um, another of his protégés. Uh, uh, with you know another, we call. He's also. I mean, I don't know because himself and Keshi and Enrico, they were they were skippers and they were they were they were captains. They were coaches. They were everything. Uh, um, it, this, he is. Some people say he's headstrong. Some people said he, but that is principles. I don't know, but we are going to hear from him uh, because we want to talk to the former captain of the Super Eagles. We want to talk to a member of the team that won us the first Olympic gold medal. We want to talk to the you know to the, to the man who was also coach of the team. They won the Nations Cup first time outside this country. Uh, we want to talk to Sonny Ogochukulise. He's right there in Belgium. Hello, Sonny. You welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Ah. Uh, Joe Erico, the man. Who was Joe Erico to you? How do you know him? How do you want Nigerians and the world to know who Joe Erico is? We are also in the house here with Jonathan Akbobody. Uh, uh, so let us, let, let's, let's, let's hear from you. Well, um, Coach Joe Erico is one of those rare Nigerians that are pioneers. Uh, in the sense that at the time Coach Joe Erico was coaching Julius Vega, you have to understand who he is, to really understand what he stood for. This was a coach who was a goalkeeper by trade. So he saw the football right from when at the starting days from the back, watching everybody. He was the, the first coach in Nigeria who believed in the passing game. He believed in young players. And that's how people like me were very young then. He took us under his wing. In fact, he was the first coach who had confidence in me, him and uh, Ayo Martins, that gave me the chance to play Julius Berger. He was the coach who asked everybody, he wanted us to play a collective football, passing football, what now they call Tiki Taka. But then it was the Brazilian one they called uh, Jogo Bonito, which was, was the beautiful game. So he's, um, he's, and as a coach, I had him for a short time, and then I went, I went abroad because I didn't stay long in Nigeria. And eventually, we met again so many times. He was always my mentor. I used to speak to him. He has a way of talking to you that reaches you. He talks to everybody differently. And when, he, when we were struggling in 2002, he did a miracle in company of Keshi and Shraibu. I mean, Coach Stephen Keshi and uh, Amodi Shraibu. And um, when I heard he was dead, I, I had to sit down. I was, it's like, what is happening, you know? People are just going, you know, people that are in our, in our circle are just going one after the other. Um, but he is a great man. And it's unfortunate that Nigerians who don't take time to know legends. This is one of those quiet legends that you have among you, but you don't know. 
one of those quiet legends we have amongst us, I will never know. Sometimes they say the angels walk with you, and then they don't, they don't, they don't come in form of angels until they display their character. Uh, uh, Sonny, hold on, because Jonathan is also here. Uh, you, you, you speak the same language. You are just speaking the same language this Sunday. Yeah, I will suddenly say uh, uh, that you know uh, he believes in you. He, he, he identifies what people don't. Want. He gave you that opportunity as a young coach, just like what you got in Europe. Uh, what? You know, uh, in, in terms of coaching, in terms of probably people say maybe he was ahead of the time. What did he, what, what did he bring? What, what, what did he bring to the table as a coach? Wow, a lot. You know, a lot of people think, um, a lot of people might think, you know, football coaching is something you just, you just go out, okay, because you've played football that you can, you can coach. No, it's not, it's not that simple. Uh, with Joe Erico, you have, the whole nine yards. I'll give you an example. Um, Ola Biyadibayo was one of, my, one of my colleagues. We played together. And um, he was very young then. He came to a trial um, where Coach Eriko was sitting down, watching and picking his team. Ola Bi played very well. Came to training two, three times later. And he didn't see him again. He was asking everybody, look, there was a young boy that came here. I want to see him. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Nobody could really tell. He went out of his way, looked for where Uwulabi was living at, went to his mom and said, look, I want to speak to your son. The woman was like, why do you want my son? He said, because he plays really, really good football. And... One way or the other, they didn't let, they didn't want Olabi to come and play football. But one way or the other, he, he convinced the mom and the father. And Olabi was, he was a brilliant footballer for us at Julius Berger. You know, I don't want to go into the technicalities because if we want to start talking about that, we'll spend the whole day yeah. talking about Joe Erico. He's, he's exceptional. But people with talents like that, are always straightforward and they want to do what they believe is the right thing to do. And when you do that in Nigeria, unfortunately, you don't get to where you want to get to. If you do that in Nigeria, uh, uh, you, 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 you had Erico in, the, in, in his opening, we said, if you are not a yes man, if you do not say yes, 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 then they will find a way to get you out. I mean, they found that your team is working as a team. They want to penetrate that team. Who are the day? Which are these invis invisible forces? Let us go back to Belgium. Uh, uh, let us go back to meet. Okay. Uh, 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 let, uh, when... When Sonny comes back, I'm being told that you know, Sonny's not online now. When he comes back, we shall go over there. Um, let, me stick, let, let, me, let, let, uh, let, let me stick with you. How many years did you play with Joe Erico? Um, I think two and a half. Two and a half years. Yes, okay. it was exactly two and a half years. Because I could remember, you know, we coming from the, from the under, under 17. 17. Yeah, that was in 85. And, uh, we trained, I was training with Julius Berger because Samson Siasia was there. Bini Binuma, my friends were, were there. Okay. And um, um, I think a few months later, Jericho now came into the team. Okay. Um, I remember there were some people who, from the beginning, they were like, ah, who is this again? Or this what boy. Is he, yeah, what is he going to bring for us? And, you know, then work really started intensively with him. You know, he wanted... Okay. A particular pattern for Ross. A particular pattern. Play. Yes. All right. Okay. I'm told that Sonny is back. Uh, let's go to Belgium uh, to meet uh, uh, Sonny Olise. I think he's back. He's back with us on Zoom. Hello, Sonny. Uh, okay. Uh, you, 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 you were with him briefly in Julius Berger. Uh, you, you left. Also, then I remember uh, you were also uh, growing up a young man. In, in, in Lagos State University then, but you, you, you choose football uh, outside of the country. But then you met back at the national team. The Erico, was there any difference between the Erico you met uh, at Julius Veja as a young man and the one you met when you came back? Uh, and then there was this traveret. You call them the three musketeers. Uh, uh, give us an insight. <laughs> well, uh, when, when I gave them the name three musketeers in the group, um, <laughs> he laughed and Coach Rival was not very funny, very funny initially 
But the reason why I, I, I call them three musketeers was like, they were like lovers, the three of them. They were always together. And like, um, I, but what the, the Arico I met in 2002, the difference with when I first started out as a kid under him was that 2002, he was more sure of himself. He was even calmer. Because when we were in Julius Berger, he taught me something. He said, look, Sonny, I am like this. If you give me ta, I will give you tata. Um, in other words, and he was telling me, that is how you have to be on the pitch. In other words, if somebody kicks you once, ta, you have to kick him ta, ta, so that he doesn't come back again. And if somebody scores this one goal, ta, you have to score them two, ta, ta, to win the game. You know, he's, he, he, in the 2002, when he came into the team, we were struggling. He, Keshi, and Shrabi were struggling. There was total disunity, not in the team, but everything around the team. There was total disunity. Coming from the federation, like you all know, like always, and um, coming from the other forces around. So the three of them, the three musketeers, brought the team to become focused match for match. I saw a lot of maturity in the man, and I saw a lot of empathy in him. And that was, um, he, he, had, he had grown so much. He was more like a, a father figure now. And at the time, Skipo Keshi was a young coach. So there were times when Skipo wanted to stand his ground, like, uh, you know, like he used to be as a captain. Yeah. And, and the Coach Arico would be the one that was, he was soften it up. He would soften it up. And at the end of the day, the team will still do what Keshi wants. But because Coach has softened it up, it becomes easier to yeah. do. And I really, I practically love the three of them, and um, I was always a, a lot with them because they were always like, "Tony, okay, Tony, this is what we're going to do. I need you. When we do this, we need you to do this as the leader of the group." I learned a lot from them, and um, I am extremely grateful to the man because the career I have today is one of that I had as a soccer player. I owe it to people like Eriko, who gave me the kickstart, who started the engine, you know. So otherwise, I don't know if I would have driven that fast. Okay, uh, uh, let us let us let, let, let me take it off from there. I, I want to ask you a two pronged question. Uh, uh, one uh, is uh, that feeling of despondency, that uh, feeling of disappointment uh, after Mali uh, that you guys didn't go to the World Cup, and two. Uh, you have you you have worked under Eriko as a Nigerian coach. You are, you are, you, are, you, are, you are speaking glowingly of Akeshi and also of Amadou Shwaibu. and also you have worked under you know a lot of foreign coaches at Ajax, at Dortmund, at UV, Regina, Cologne, and all those areas. Uh, uh, how how do you rate the Nigerian coach? I'm sorry, you are one of them, uh, but how do you rate the Nigerian coach? <laughs> Um, take this from me, huh? because I played at Ajax, which is more like the Barcelona kind of football, tiki-taka what uh, Guardiola is doing now. But take this from me. As at 1988-89, Enrico was already doing what Guardiola is doing now. Wow. The only difference is that Enrico is a black man. That is all. Eriko is an African. You see, we have great coaches in Nigeria. We have people with ideas. As long as you have great players in the country, just know that you have great coaches amongst them. Okay. And if we don't have coaches that are, as, that are now showing up and doing well, look, I was the, I'm the only fortunate one who has been able to come to Europe and win something as a coach. And now I have Ndubisi who has, who has joined the group. He has won something too. You know, but if you look at where we are in the western part of Europe, I was only able to get this chance after so many years of perseverance and hard work. And the only job I got was because of the fact that the club was dead, poor, and nobody wanted the job. It was suicidal. And that was the only one that was available for me to do. Uh, and I, I was fortunate enough to be able to take it and made it into a team that went to the first division from second division. Now, these are qualities that people like Eriko already had 30 years ago, but they never got the chance. What Keshi did at the national team 
of Nigeria. He can as well do it abroad. But the thing that is, what is so bad and what pains me always is when I look at our country, is that we destroy what we have. We don't, we're not ha we don't, we don't pride in what we have. We don't try to make what we have best. People say they hate Donald Trump. But Donald Trump made one statement that I said, my wife knows I hate, I don't like him. I, don't, I can't even stand his interviews, I change the television. But I said to my wife, there is one thing this man has that I wish we had back home. Donald Trump always says, America first, others second. It might sound racist, yeah? but if we put our people first, then people like Coach Rico will not have just coached in Nigeria. Because with what they had then, we will have coached abroad too. Mm. The three of them qualified Nigeria to the World Cup 2002. We were at one point five points behind when they took over. We turned it around and won the and qualified three points ahead with four games to go. Can you imagine that? In 12 points. Now, they qualified us. They were the first African coach, Nigerian coaches to qualify Nigeria to any World Cup. They got sacked because we took third in Senegal. It, can you imagine? And today, Nigerians celebrate third as golden bronze. We killed the three people we had. You see, it, when our country is so blessed, and I, I still say it, I'm proud to say it abroad, that I come from the most blessed nations in, in the world. And I can stand by it anytime because there is nothing we don't have. But at the same time also, we are the ones destroying ourselves, which is a shame. You, were you, were you, uh, uh, the second part of the question, you got, we, how disappointed were you guys when it, that decision was made? I know we'll, uh, we'll, go, we'll go on a break, so I don't want to take this uh, briefly with you before we go on break. Okay. Uh, um, how disappointed were you when you guys were dropped in 2002? I know a lot of moves were also made to get back to you. But let's go on break. Let's go, let's, let's, let's go on break. When we come back, we are going, you are going, to, we are going to take this question. Jonathan is still in the house. Uh, he has not spoken anything this year, but we are to the end of the year. Uh, uh, Yemi is here also part of the team. So you just stay with us as we take this first short break. Keshe Omo, who is today the, um, the coach, assistant trainer, the goalkeeper's trainer, trainer, assistant yeah. coach to be precise, mm. was injured. And for 48 hours, we did not see anybody. We, might, we didn't sleep. It was my, the coaches and the doctor. Dr. Moazo is still there today. It was the coaches and, the, and the, the medical team. We did not sleep throughout, over 48 hours. We managed to catch our sleep early in the morning. Throughout the next day when we had off, no official. Nobody came in there to say, oh, come on, until when we went to the field in the evening. The care was still drowsy. He went to the field. Then they came in to address us. Simple question. But, uh, I think chairman, he was the chairman. Or was it the yeah, minister. Yeah. Minister and chairman of Benos. Who? Aku. Makaku. He said, sir, if I was a child, would you have left me in the dark like this? We couldn't go to the hospital if not for the medical team that came from this, the uh, Malia medical team with doc, our doctor, able, able doctor Moaz. He would have passed on. He said, Is this how you would have treated me? It was a KG that came with, I can't really remember the statement the KG made. Sunday sparked. Everybody sparked. It wasn't Sunday Ulisse. It was, it was a United sparking. Against the minister, against the KG. Against the KG. It wasn't against the minister. Okay. The minister was to answer a simple question. If I was your son, would you have left me like this? Because the care was almost dead. Okay, you're welcome back. It is such an spot on Sunday. And we are still celebrating uh, the one and only Joe Eriko. I call him Eriko. I keep on calling him. And that's how I keep on calling him. Eriko. And he says Kendo. I don't know where the D comes from. Everybody calls me Kendo, but he calls me Kendo. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell you, this uh, uh, is a, a man after my heart. Um, but uh, I don't know if Sonny is, if Sonny is, if Sonny is online now. Is Sonny online? It's, Sonny is yes, online. Uh, Sonny, I, I don't know. You, uh, are you following the show? Because I just showed a clip where he talked about you. 
I said, uh, uh, Sondo did not did, did not abuse the minister. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, 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 that is part of the things that gain currency in Nigeria, that you, as keeper of the national team, you abused the then minister of sports. Uh, but then Eriko mm. cleared the air. That was some years back here when he was on the set, yeah, and he cleared the air. Uh, what transpired in that dressing room? To start with, uh, um, it's been it's been now 30 years that I'm in the limelight of Nigerian football. No Nigerian can say I have insulted them. It's not in my upbringing. Now, if I cannot insult my peers, who am I to dare insult a sitting minister? You, who dare you? Even the chairman of the NFF can never say I ever insulted him talking insulting the minister. And the thing there is, eventually this year, you will get to know more about what happened in 2002 and even other years in Nigeria. I will make that available to Nigerians. But one thing that you have to also realize is that as of 2002, they had extra sporting reasons to break the team. And like Coach Rico went to his death now, he's old by NFF. He's old by Nigeria. Are you saying, today I'm aware are, he was not paid. Are you saying the NFF is still owing Coach Erico? You are aware of that? They are still owing Coach Erico. They are still owing Coach Erico as they were owing uh, Shuaibu and Keshi from the 2002. But they are, not as they are still owing me. They are, as not as they are, owing, owing, are they owing Sondo? As they are still owing Finney. Of course, they are still owing Finney George. They are still owing me. But the thing that is, there will always be stories about it. But I don't want to go into details because we have to celebrate Coach so, Eriko and Rico. not talk of things. Yeah. But, 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 but now, to break Coach Eriko and to tell lies that, okay, you sacked, okay, so, okay let's say it like this. So, on the insulted the minister. Why did you stop Finney from going to the World Cup? Finity did not make the statement. I was the one who said uh, to the minister, uh, to the, uh, um, what's his Patrick, name again? Patrick Kejim. Yeah, okay. It, it was Patrick Kejim. We, did, we didn't address the minister. We, it was Patrick Kejim. We spoke and we told him, we said, listen, you have to pay us our, our entitlements, otherwise we don't play. That was what the group said. It. And as a captain, one thing I learned from Nelson Mandela and from my parents is that you don't lead by what you think. You better what people say, what your colleagues say, and that is what, on the consensus, that's what you present. And that's how I led the uh, Super Eagles. And I led, I led it because I learned that from Keshi too. That's how Keshi was doing it. So it's, it's, and Keshi was, I was very close to Keshi. So, but the thing that was, if at the time, they just wanted to break coach, you know, but Coach Arico is a very peaceful person. So how can, and I think somewhere, um, um, Ikesho Rumu, who almost died when we played Ghana on that game, he made a statement addressing the minister. And he didn't even insult the minister. He just asked um, that, he just asked if I, had I been your son, and I was knocked out in a state of coma in the hospital, would you not have come to, to check on me and even make sure that I'm okay and pay my bills and take me out of the hospital? That's all he asked. But at the end of the day, he came went to the World Cup, but Fini did it. So you see, it's mysterious, but that is Nigeria for you. But I would like us to celebrate Coach Eriko, not talk about the bad thing. But I think it's unfortunate that they didn't allow the man who had helped Nigeria go to the World Cup as the first... Uh, indigenous coach, did they allow him to enjoy it and go to the work? That's that's my only pain for the for coach for coach. Uh, okay, uh, uh, we are in the studio. <laughs> we we'll 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 still, we'll still come back to you because today we are like you said we are celebrating Jericho. Are you are you have any because of Jonathan? Because Jonathan Jonathan also suffered the same fate, but not going to France ninety eight. Absolutely. Yeah, me <laughs> before even them uh, coming to. Uh, Jonathan and yes. uh, Sunday. Yeah. I met uh, Coach uh, Eriko uh, on a few occasions. Yes. And I saw a principled man, a man with a lot of passion for Nigerian football. But again, I saw a man that was bitter about how Nigeria treated him. It's unfortunate that we don't celebrate our own. We don't celebrate them while they're alive. Everybody's talking about um, 
Eriko in um, a glowing uh, tank Tans, house. Nah. But was Nigeria really there for Eriko? When Eriko needed Nigeria. Did we really serve Eriko the way he served Nigeria? And it was um, uh, widely reported. Eriko even mentioned it here. That he placed a course on Nigerian football. You brought them in when uh, Donny Bonfire, when the team was struggling, uh, Eriko, Amodu, and uh, Teshi. It's yeah. unfortunate that the three of them, they are, they, they, they've passed on to the great beyond now. They rescued the team, just like um, uh, Sunday said, and they got rewarded with a, a sack for, for coming third. What we now celebrate as golden, golden uh, the, full, the, full, the full nation the, the Cup. Full nation we said we had, we had a golden bronze. So uh, <laughs> for me, I, I, I think we Nigeria wasn't fair to Eriko, and um, uh, it's, it's, it's not yet. The man is gone. It's not too late, uh, but you know promises here count for nothing <laughs> because when the man was even alive, like, like Sunday said, NFL CEO Sunday, uh, oh infinity judge. Oh, in Jericho, oh, in Shaiba Modu. I remember Eric Benny mentioning that he flew to Sydney 2000 Olympics with his own. Uh, they've uh, they've not refunded his ticket till today. today. Yeah, so but, but they, they, remember him missed, they remember he missed a scoring opportunity. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, yeah, you, you see, for me, yes, we are here to celebrate um, uh, Joe uh, Eriko. We still have a lot of legends still living. Let us give them their dues. Do Let's you have any question for, 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 like, for Jonathan? Um, uh, <laughs> 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 Joe, Joe is part of the team. I don't know. mind him. He's hiding behind his scene. I, 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 will, I will give you the secrets today. I, 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 don't I, I worry. Know. But, but you yeah. see, what I'm going to ask is, uh, Jonathan, we've seen a lot of players, ex-players, who have gone on to coaching. While they were players, they stood for the right of their players. But whenever they cross that divide, working uh, with um, uh, NFF, why are they not able to practice what they've preached as a, a player? Is it that the system is sucking them in or there's something in this system? <laughs> um, first of all, to the NFF, I'm a rebel. <laughs> uh, because I always want to tell you what I think. That, that way of life I learned also from, I took from Eric. Because, you know, as a young, as a young player, you watch him talking to the management and, you know, he says to the players, this is what we are going to do. And they come back and they tell him that, look, these people are complaining that we are not supposed to be doing this. And he says, hold on a second. He goes and he talks to them and he's like, look, this is what I want the players to do right now. He comes back and he says, okay, we are going to do this. You know, so it's, it's a big problem when a coach comes into the national team or a footballer, a former footballer comes into the national team, he's a coach, and he says, okay, this is exactly what, what I want to be done with the players. This is where we want to train. These are the things that we want to do. As a Nigerian or as a former footballer, the NFF, they don't give you that respect. They will tell you, oh, Okay, maybe because he's Nigeria, no, this is what we can afford, this is what we can do, and you have to do that. I am appalled by my former colleagues that are actually working with the NFF now. Um, personally, we are friends, we remain friends, but when we talk about football, I am really, really angry with them because when we were playing, everybody keeps saying, everybody keeps saying that, you know, um, we want to make changes we want to make changes um, in our football but we've not done that that is why we are here today what, they are there what, I don't what, what, what sort of changes that do you think would have been positive I, I let me just give you a general view I started playing for Nigeria from 1985 the under-17 that's about 37, on, year, 37 years ago went on to the under-20 um, under 23 with the Olympic team and uh, the Super Eagles. From the Super Eagles, we've seen, from this time, we've seen so many changes in the world, drastic changes, football everywhere around Europe. But around our Super Eagles, around our national team, when you go back, even female football, they still do the same AK things that they used to do. <laughs> Expecting a different result. It's unbelievable.
it's unbelievable. If you go to the NFF today, or maybe you follow our national team, they are still doing things. It's, it's really, really unbelievable. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he said it's unbelievable. But well, let's go to Belgium. Let's go to Belgium. Uh, let's, go, let's go and meet Sonny. Uh, 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 Sonny, I know it is in the spirit of Eriko, but uh, we are also using this opportunity to clear a lot of airs. Uh, first, let me, let me ask you a point blank question. Uh, you coach the national team. If the opportunity arises again, will you do that? If you're asked to come and coach the national <laughs> team again, will you do it? Look, I've been married to an extremely beautiful woman for the past 26 years, Afida Bulaba. And I am enjoying every minute living with her now. I'm enjoying every minute being at home. So uh, I don't think I want to change that. And my kids are making me happy. Um, so I think I don't, I don't want to give the right answer to that question, but I think you understand what I mean. So, <laughs> but on the other hand, um, I would also like to clear something because uh, I hear some people say, ah, um, uh, Sonny is this, Sonny is that. I, all through the years I played in the Super Eagles and all through my playing career, I cherish my privacy so much, I guide it religiously. Of all my colleagues, there is only one colleague that I can tell you that knows Sunday Ulysses. And that is Tijani Babangida. He's the only one that I've gone to his I go to his house, he comes to my place. Because you're in Ajax, because you are in Ajax, you are in Ajax together. <laughs> he was my roommate at Ajax day in, day out, every time. And and until today, to today, if I need something about Nigeria, I know if Tija will talk to you. If TJ needs something, it will come and we'll talk about it. He's the only player of the old Spirecoast that knows Sunday. No other Sukai Eagles player can tell you he went to party with me once. No other Super Eagles player will tell you he went to a discotheque with me once. Or no other Super Eagles player will tell you that we, we ran after women together. It's not possible. Because I, was always, I always keep to myself. So when I hear people give opinions about me, when they don't even know me, I, I, I just laugh and I say, how can you say Sunday is this, Sunday is that? You don't know me. I don't, I have, I have, it's only my close friends who know me. Or maybe Dosu Joseph. That we grew up together as kids so it is even um if you ask just ask my colleagues you need the george and all of them ask them if they've ever been to my place no when we're in the camp i don't go to other people's rooms i stay in my room i come to serve nigeria we play we go it's not because i don't want to but it's because one has to handle themselves in that way you know if one thing that i should also say is that for nigeria itself a lot of ex soccer players are suffering today. Why is that so? It is not their fault. When I played at the Super Eagles, huh, I played with probably the most generous players, the most generous Nigerians I ever knew. Every time we played games, Super Eagles players, all their bonuses, nobody ever flies away out of Nigeria with it. They use it to solve family problems and friends' problems. The lobbies of the hotel was always crowded of people. Because the Super Eagles players were always taking care of family parents. So when I see people now try to laugh at, at, my, at the ex-colleagues, it is unfair. At the same time also, they loved Nigeria. And if you look around Europe here, the football industry absorbs ex-players in different magnitude, different degrees. And most ex-players go back to their countries and they go into the leagues, maybe the first, second, the third, or they go to development football, or they go into local football. When I was growing up, we had Badagri League, we had Lafa League, we had the National League, we had the Super League, we had a national team. This had so many clubs and so many avenues for players to play, and it reabsorbed ex-players to continue working in the job they know till they grow old. All that is dead now. So when a player stops football at 32, 33, Please tell me what he's supposed to do till he gets to 70. When our local league is not functioning, even when the players, uh, ex-players get a job, they don't get paid. The national league is not functioning. The youth league is not functioning. We now have academies instead of clubs. So, you see, it is easy to always attack individuals. I understand it. In life, when you have no arguments against somebody, you attack their character. Yeah, is this, is this, is that. 
How can you be vilifying somebody because he's principled and you celebrate people who are embezzling our country's money? You see, it's, it's, you see, this is how we have to think if we want to get Nigeria out of it. People like Coach Eriko should be celebrated. They should. In fact, as we're talking now, the government should take over his burial. Everything that has to do, they have to do it, the family, because he's a national hero. Okay, let me, let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, it, it gained currency when you resigned, that you were afraid of Juju. That was why you left the national team. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. So then you talked about you did talk about your medical condition, but please, I, I, I want, Nigerians want to hear directly from you. Was it because of Juju you left the national team? Where did that was why you resigned? I, I you did uh, no mass and not do again. Was it because was it because of that? My brother, I played Super Eagles for ten years though. <laughs> so if not, if if I don't have you under myself when it comes to Juju, I don't just then, then I don't know why I played Super Eagles. <laughs> so what, what really happened? You talked about time, moms, yeah. Look, when, what happened was, when I was coaching Nigeria, I caught the virus called mumps. Okay. It is a bit, when you're an adult and you catch it, it's a bit like what corona does now. Because it affects your immunity. It gives you a swell here and then it, all, it, it can even make you sterilized. It affects your inner ear, it affects your eyes, your nose and everything. I was struggling so bad. I lost weight. I was falling sick. I had to come to Germany. For them to even discover I have books, I had to go to Munich to get treated. It cost me 11,300 euros to cure myself from months. And as at that time, it was that bad. If you, if you check the picture, you see how I lost weight. Especially if you look at the picture at Chan, you saw how lean I was. I was suffering so much, and the, coach, the doctors all in Europe said to me, I shouldn't travel anymore, I shouldn't go to Africa. But I was coach of the Super Eagle. And I wanted to serve my country. So I said, no, I will do it. So they were giving me infusions of vitamin C. If you ask the doctor of Super Eagles, when we played uh, in Swaziland for the uh, World Cup qualifiers to 2018, he came into my room three hours to the game to give me a drip of vitamin C. That was how bad it was. But Nigerians didn't know about that. And I was doing all this because I wanted my country to go to the World Cup. And I wanted to help the players because I believe I have the quality, so pass it on. But the doctors also told me you have to keep distance from people because your immunity is so low, you cannot affect, you cannot afford another infection. When I came, I explained it to everybody. I listen, guys, when it comes to handshakes, hugging, and you know, even drinking from water and things like that, or from cups, I have to be careful because even if I catch not just small bacteria, it will get worse. Oh, it appear juju. That is why. Now, <laughs> coronavirus is here now. It is the same thing. People should not shake hands. People should not do this. That was how it is. Um, I resigned from the Super Eagles because I decided when I was sick, I was going to stop. Because I didn't get any help from the Federation. In fact, today, I didn't get one cobble from that 11300 I spent. And I told them about the, the fees. Nobody, nobody tried to help me with support. But the, I, had, I was bringing up some boys to go to China. They were home-based players. I had formed them, they were playing some wonderful football, possession football, aggressive football, pressing football. So, and the boys, I made an agreement with them that, listen, I will take you to Chan and I will help you to sell yourself. Most of those boys today are not professionals. I took them to Chan and we lost the last game because the boys didn't even want to play because they were not paid. They were not given anything. So it is, it, and then that was it. But when the tournament was over, I felt that, accomplished my pact with this group of players are making the world. I resigned. And then they started, oh, it's because of this, because of that. Why can you tell me you love Nigeria more than me? I've almost, I've come out of almost on a, on a dying bed to, to help Nigeria uh, get to the World Cup, uh, to the Nations Cup final in 2000. Yeah. You know, I've spent my own money to, uh, to finance Super Eagles on several occasions. So how can somebody come out and say, you resigned because of this? If you love Nigeria so much, show me what you have done for Nigeria, not what you have taken from Nigeria. <laughs> that, that is the thing. But the thing is, when you, when, you, when you are somebody like me that is, I am principled. I'm not ashamed to say about it. If I like something, I do it. If I don't like it, I stay away from it. And the principle has kept me, got me this far. And I will continue to be like that. But at the same time also, I also respect people because God blessed us differently, in different ways. But the only thing I ask of is that, look, let's love our own because 
you cannot kick out your own child and adopt the neighbor's child. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Okay, uh, uh, so then you, we, we'll keep you there because, uh, uh, Jonathan, you know, you, Jonathan is here. Another ex-international is also in the house. He will join us now, Benjamin James. He will join us. Uh, we're having a party. We are celebrating in, in, in the spirit of what Eriko would have done. Uh, that is why we are doing all this. And I know bringing you out, asking you this personal question, I just want some... Uh, no matter when people come here, I, I, I don't believe in rumors. We want the air to be cleared. Let, you know, hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, don't go back and say, mm -mm, this is how it happened because it happened before our face. Mm -hmm. I know you, are, you don't listen to doctors. Doctor will tell you don't do this. Malaria, you talk about 2000, you know, I, I, the match against Senegal. You were there on the bed, you were sick. Sonny, you oh. went and dressed and wanted to play for oh. Nigeria. The same thing with Jonathan, who we, uh, we, we, we caught the Stroke to National Stadium. They, they were looking for Eagles to fill up the team, and the guy will just cut his sneaker and enter there. Guys, I'm, I'm happy to have you guys in the house. Uh, the discussion will continue. Uh, uh, Sonny, just stay there. <laughs> Let's uh, come back here. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, you, 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 you've been listening to your colleague, you've been listening to your brother, your friend. Um, how, you know, uh, uh, look, looking back at how stubborn, you talk about, you know, uh, uh, you didn't even talk because I, there was part of the interview, I would have shown it, where uh, uh, Eriko said, look, I walked to Idama. He challenges Idama. You know, Idama was like a god then in Julius Vega. He was everything. And you guys, did you get all these things from Joe Eriko or how? Well, I think, you know, when you spend time with somebody, and yes. you see how successful he is, yeah. the way he does his stuff, then... It rubs, it rubs, it rubs on you. Uh, it rubs on you. Exactly. So I think those, those are the things, the the little things we pick uh, on the way going into going into the time we we spent with uh, with uh, with Joe Eriko. Um, there were so many things, you know. Um, at Julius Baga then, um, I could remember dozens of stuff when you know the team we are on the road you know uh, the coach wants something for his players for them to be comfortable the management is saying uh, no we have to we have to do it this way or they have to do it this way so many arguments alas and then and, and erico yeah. it was a joy to watch at that time but you don't know that you, yeah, you are learning from all of this we, 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 we go we go on a very very short break again and when we come back benja uh, uh, that guy has his own history too he will join the house you stay with us <laughs> Okay, you're welcome back. Uh, it's just still uh, celebrating Joe Rico. He left us about three days ago, Thursday. And then uh, 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 it, the versions, maybe the, uh, as, the weeks, as the week go uh, in the next few weeks, to, we, should, we still take some of those interviews, you know, that he did. I, I was, we were searching for the one he did in, in, uh, when uh, Amo, Amo died. You know, Amodou and Keji died three, four days. One died June 7, around June 10, 2016. And by June 12, two days after he was here, and then uh, uh, it was a vintage Erico, uh, you know, it, it, it was the last of the three musketeers, like Sandu Lisa just said. I call them the Troika. Others call them, you know, uh, the, uh, in a, a lot of a lot of names. But then we are, I have, well, somebody has just joined us. Um, uh, you know, we, we, when defenders come as defenders, they come as defenders. If you know, if you if the ball pass me, you you know go pass. Guy, he plays football. You know, I mean, in, when he's there, you know he's there. I, I don't want to think about him. Let's let, let with Benjamin James. <laughs> Hello, Benja. <laughs> you welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. Eh, eh, eh. Benja, the football we have played before these days, <laughs> the league that you guys played on. Uh, uh, Sonny just said, after the, uh, you know, you, you, if you play in Europe, if a Brazilian finish playing in Europe, he goes back. If uh, an Ivorian finish playing in Europe, he goes back. If a Gabonese finish playing in Europe, he goes back. If a Nigerian finish playing, some of them will prefer to even be uh, 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 train conductors and other things. I mean, what was the problem between the league you played in? How many, how many clubs you played for first on Nigeria? I played for police machine team, mm -hmm. stationary stars, uh -huh, GIB Rugs, yes. and ICC shooting and stars. stars. Okay, there was this thing, maybe you confirm it. Y yourself, I think we did, is it deep table or so? You guys were the first Nigerians to do mid-season transfer. Was it from JIB to 3SC or whatever? There was, what's that? How did, uh, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> 
my my transfer then was like a magic because I, I decided I was the governor then, military governor. And uh, I played against them and I scored in Ibadan, Adama Sigba. So, okay. And I think it was Latif Yusuf who told me, Ben, they want you for Ibadan. They want you. They said they are going to pay any amount. So okay. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> As AJ boy now, uh, yeah. you know, I just... <laughs> Move. You moved. <laughs> you moved from JIB straight to Triassi. Yeah, yeah. Miss is it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we had the transfer and we still wait. Okay. We played the league. The league. So they couldn't trap us down again before I moved. Before you moved. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, but now, so, but, 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 like I said, what, what, compare the league then and the league now briefly. I mean, what is the difference? <laughs> yeah. If you want <laughs> me to be honest, uh, yeah. there is nothing to talk about our league for now. Because then I will go to we play the you know, Nikon Stadium. You will see at 12 o'clock, the, the whole tree around Onikon is filled up with people outside. Not, in, not even in the stadium, outside. That guys, the stadium is filled? Guys, the trees, the no, 12. If you come 1 o'clock, you are late. Guys is, uh, some guys are out there telling guys, uh, get me 100, Euro, 100 naira, you climb the tree to watch the game. So oh, they, they were making, taking dead feet to climb, to for you to climb tree. the tree. Oh. <laughs> you will see about 40,000 spectators watching a Nigerian league game. Now, we prefer to go to a bar and watch Arsenal <laughs> So he's <play>. laughing. <laughs> no, but, but, but sorry, now, it's, not just, it's, not just, it's not just the crowd. Yes. The crowd, you know, Nigerians like good, good things. Nigerians like good football. It was the quality of football that we were playing yeah. at that time. Like you said, Joe the Erico, quality of Joe, Joe, Joe Erico. The, Joe no, sure, Bonito, sure. Yeah. the Lagos Brazilians, yeah. as you know, the, 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 the bridge boys. The, the, bridge boys. boys. the kind of football we were playing. You yeah. had Sonny. Sonny was saying, you know, what Guardiola was doing then. I sure. remember the time in training, we would take, he would tell you, look, this is what I want. Let us start from the goalkeeper. And somebody like me, I'm like, ah, coach, what is this? They will rush us, they will score us now. It yeah. will be this. He said, no, do it. I am telling you to do it. I'm giving the confidence to do, do it. it. We started doing so it. So play from the from, back that people are yes, talking about now. From training. Yes. We started playing like that in games. Because you had the confidence, from, confidence the coach. from the coach. Sonny, 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 let's go back. Let's go to Belgium. Sonny, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> Sonny, where are you? Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you had there. You had no, I, I, Somebody I, I, was collecting dead fee for to, someone to climb the tree. You understand? To, because the stadium is filled up. You understand? Okay. I, 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 before you come to this, Sonny. Uh, um, um, okay. Go on. You are laughing. <laughs> because it's re re reminiscences. I, I, you, you, you I, I'm, 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 I'm laughing. No, I'm laughing because what, what he said is true, and I, and I, and I, I know I'm aware of it. At the price of the tree, I don't know, but I know people used to pay to go to the tree. <laughs> I, I know people used to climb that tree. <laughs> okay, then, then let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, the, league, the league to come back to, uh, uh, which is, you know, there is this music that they play these days. They said, well, no matter where you go, Remember the road that will take you back. You understand? Uh, the road that will take you back home. Home is home. Um, you played with Benny. You played with the young Benny McCarthy right there in, at Ajax. Benny, yeah. had a leg, Benny had a leg to go back. You mentored him. Uh, can, you, can you just give us a glimpse of what it is like and then how you see Benny going back to South Africa to play, to, to, to coach and other things and to end and to live a good life while your colleagues, your fellow Nigerians in Belgium are not even thinking of coming back home? Well, the thing there is when I met Benny McCarthy, he was just 17 years old. And I was, I was fortunate. I was already an established uh, player in Europe and the uh, world stage. We had, we had won the Olympics even before then. That was 1997. And, he, you know, the appetite had just finished. He had come back into, come into, Julio, uh, into Ajax. But um, at the time, he was like my junior brother. I, the, the Dutch players used to say, don't touch Benny because Sonny will not accept, you know. So because I, I never allowed that they bully the poor boy. So, um, but he's, 
it, it, it comes back to what we, I said earlier as regards, if you look around the world, if it goes bad for you, you, you go back home. Like my son now, he's, a, he's, he's just about to finish his university studies. Um, when he's not feeling good, he comes here and he stays at the weekend. He stays with us because he's come back home when he's not feeling okay. And then he charges his battery and he goes back. But the important is that our own people, we can't go back home. It's not because they don't want to. Who wants to spend six months in the cold, in snow? Nobody. The, the Nigerian food alone, even the air, when you come out of the airplane, it smells so nice, no matter mm. what. It's different. So, so Nigeria is, uh, is, is like, if you go to Nigeria, when, when it's time to leave, you, you, you almost want to intentionally miss your flight because you want to stay some more. But, but at the same time, we need to be able to feed. And when you finish here, you can't go back home because there's nothing to go back to because the leaks are not functioning. Now, for the leaks to function, what do we have to do? I think it's high time we, we talk about, we thought about having competent people to manage football. It's not because you play football at secondary school, you know anything about football. It's not because you play football uh, um, at, a, at, at, a, at a very, very low league level, you can manage football. You know, it's, if you ask players who even played in the European leagues, there's a difference with a player who played in the European league to a player who played in, in the top club of, of, Euro, of Europe. When, you, when I mean the top club, I mean the clubs like uh, uh, Juventus, uh, AC Milan, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Ajax, Manchester United. You know, these top clubs who are, who are used to winning Champions Leagues, if you go in the dressing room, it is totally different. Like the dressing room in, in Dortmund is totally different from the dressing room in, in Ajax. So it's, in, in, sorry, in FC Cologne. Yeah. But the thing that is, the point I'm trying to make up with that is that the level the higher you go in the game, the more you say things. Some people are unique. They don't have to be at that level to have it. And that's where people like Enrico came in. Mm. When a coach who was a goalkeeper by formation, and even up to the point of being a national team goalkeeper, if he is able to take a team like Julius Berger from Division 2 to Division 1, make them play a totally different brand of football from the whole other clubs in Nigeria with young players playing what we now call Tiki Taka, but he used to call it Jogo Bonito. We, that, that tells you that we had a legend who came earlier than his time. Mm. And unfortunately, maybe his skin color also it kept him there. So you see, this, this is why I feel that Nigeria has so much to offer. But our people are working with chains on their, on their waist and a very big uh, rock behind them so they can't move forward. Chains on their waists. Uh, uh, imaginary chain. I, I don't want to imagine the chains on it, but let me, let me talk to your brothers here on the set <laughs> because they are listening to you. What do we do, uh, 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 Jonathan? What do we do? Uh, uh, you as a young man, you, 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 you enjoyed your playing in Germany, in Stuttgart. Uh, uh, he said, some say you don't want to stay in the cold for six months. I remember, you know, two of you, you are in Germany, you are in Italy, <laughs> you are, you know, in Swiss. The last time we spoke, you were in Switzerland. Yes, you I, in am, Switzerland. I am. You know, so, you know, uh, uh, and then we, we, 12 months in Nigeria, you can afford to wear anything you want to wear. Sure. You can afford to eat what you want to eat. You can afford to do a lot of things. What do we do? Now, you see, um, <coughs> it's, not that, it's not that we don't have uh, good coaches in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, because we are talking about coaches now, the quality of coaches. But coaching, just as football has evolved, coaching has also evolved. And, you know, um, today, just as we see, okay, your talent as a footballer is not enough again. During my time or during our time, your talent is enough. For example, the ATM Messing, his talent was enough, good enough yeah. for us to start begging and saying, okay, no, ATM must play, ATM must play. Today, nobody begs you. It's the same thing as coaching. Coaching, you must have a talent. And you have to enhance your talent on your own. You don't wait for government to do to, that, to do for, that you. for you. Eriko, there was a lot during his own background, what he used to do. He was in Holland for so many times to enhance his talent. He came back and he actually knew exactly what he wanted to do. We are begging the coaches in Nigeria because the quality of football depends on them. They do not have to wait for government or for the NFL. How do you, you rate wrong? 
How? General Trump, five over ten, six over ten, yeah. seven over ten, ten over ten. For me, it's about it's about three over ten. Three over ten. Yes, in the last few games he has played, because yeah. as a coach you are as good as your last of game. Of course, at twenty twenty we, we 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 played four and didn't win anyone. Exactly, and also it's 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 a it's a big it's a big issue for us because a lot of people are saying, okay, we want our own coaches, are our own coaches actually good enough to handle our national team now? I look at the league, and I don't see it. Because it's from the league, you pick somebody. You cannot go and pick somebody who is heading an academy. academy. You have to go to the league, look at the quality of football they, they are playing. Yeah, the, the, the quality of football playing. we want to play as Nigeria. What we are used to. Do we have those coaches? I don't think so. I go with him every time. I watch him. They develop the youth. Yeah, because that's, uh, that's what I want to go. Let us now. I want, I want to go to Benja. Uh, uh, Benja, you've been working with uh, uh, the youth teams in Europe. You know, for how, for how long now? I've been working with uh, TSG 1899 Hoffenheim for 16 years. For now. 16 good years. Uh, uh, working, with, working with the kids at that level, developing them, uh, uh, what you learned also, we were, we were talking about what Eriko did. Of course, that your axis be that one. Sure, you understand. Um, we, 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 how do you, how, is there a specialty in handling kids, you know, than when you coach you know, as, as, as they mature. What is so, what, what is so, so special that you know, must come with a coach who wants to bring out the best, you know, are, are, are from those kids? With the kids, your relationship matters a lot with them. Okay. And how you bring them together as a team and the basic. We start with the basic every day. I've been working there with these players for a very long time. He knows the professor we have. He's a football teacher, but often I employ him there. He's a football teacher. Okay. Yeah, he has the highest degree ever in the world as a football lehrer. It's so he's, he, he's there, and uh, I have been working with him for 16 years, and I've learned a lot from him. Technically, at times, he would tell me, Benny, you are too good for... I, anything he wants to say with the kids, say, Benny, you go. You go and address them. Because this is your, you are specialized in that. Area. So I will talk to them. If I come, my players, they are in the Bundesliga everywhere. They see me, they will just stop their car. They will be honing. They will jump down and hug me. I would like, at times I shed tears, you know, and I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. When uh, uh, Johnny is talking about coaches in Nigeria, he's <laughs> when, he's talk, when he's talking about coaches in Nigeria, yeah. one thing we should know is, in Europe, we do coaching clinic nearly every two months. We refresh. But NIS, maybe some of them will say Ben does the running mouth. I'm not. I am going straight to the point. You have your license in our national uh, institute. institute here. You have it forever. Do they renew license in Nigeria? No. But we, after three years, you have to go and sit again to renew your license. This is what we do. So, so, so your, 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 the, the, the technique you learned three years, after three years, it has expired. You need, you need to upgrade. You, 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 you need to upgrade. You need to upgrade. You need to upgrade. You need to Every two months, Every two, two months, you are coming out. Okay, last time, let's, let's go back uh, finally to, uh, uh, to Belgium. Uh, uh, let's go and meet, let's go and meet Coach uh, uh, Sunday Ulisse. Uh, hello, Coach. Okay. Uh, I'm here, you, man. Uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are listening to them. And then uh, uh, they said, "What about you? Is, are you are you headstrong? Uh, uh, um, you refuse to do it the way they want to do it at Citad. What happened at Citad, Sonny? <laughs> Citad. Look, I I followed uh, intriguingly the co some comments that were made back home when I lost my job at Citad. Yeah. When when I coached Citad." Um, of all my career as a soccer player, that was where I suffered the most discrimination. Now, when I coached that club, I'll give you, let's, let me just give you a little example. I coached that club for almost 18 months, like, like one and a half years. Yeah. When I took over, they were last on the league. The day I was sacked, I was first on the league with six points ahead of Ajax. And we had lost only two, two, two games in the whole season. Now, all the other things that I told you about is that there were things they were doing I didn't want to be part of because I know the ramifications that the government does. 
when such things happen. I don't know if you follow the Dutch now. There is a scandal that is going in Holland now, whereby uh, families were being, um, they were just the tax companies were being attacking families based on their nationality and trying to say they were trying to like fake up tax declarations or things or all those kind of things as regards the children allowances and all that. And for that reason, they were just being uh, indiscriminately just giving fines. That was what I was trying to avoid. At the time. Now, for a, a year and a half, I coached it out. Not once was my toilet or my office cleaned. I am a coach. As a black man, I had to do that myself. Now, I think if you don't, if you, that, that explains uh, furthermore. But it seated itself. I enjoyed working with the boys. I took them from last to top. Us. The boys were doing well. The, and, and now they're in the first division. And people say, Sonny, you should want them to go down to Division 2. I say, no, no, no. Let them continue to stay there. Even if every year they get saved okay. on the last day by rele from relegation, they have to be there because it's good for people to know that this club is there because the Nigerian brought them there. All right, Sonny, <laughs> Sonny, we want, Sonny, we want to go. We want to go. Uh, uh, 60 seconds, your last word on Eriko, so that I also take the closer remark from your, your colleagues here. I work, um, or as regards to Cherico, I personally, um, may so rest in peace. I owe him a lot. I thank him. I thank his family if they are listening because he helped people like me have food on the table today. So I will forever be grateful. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Benja, your last, your, your words on uh, Erico? <laughs> Joe Erico. I didn't play on that in him? any way, but uh, I love him. As a coach. As a coach. I love him so much. Okay, Jonathan, he, so he, he brought you up. Yes, he, <laughs> he did. was your father figure. Yes, he <laughs> is. I, I, I still, I still am shocked that uh, he's gone. Because even after football, I see him every day. I play tennis. He comes to the stadium to exercise. It was a shock to me. Um, uh, I will miss him. Uh, may he so rest in peace. Okay. Okay, uh, I, I, I think uh, it, it's, 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 it's been a great, it's been a great show. Uh, I want to thank Sonny there, uh, who has taken his time out. You know, Sonny doesn't come out often, but this time, once, once in a while, we're going to pinch him out of his recklessness, and he will talk to Nigerians because we need him. <laughs> uh, uh, Benja, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, Jonathan, you are part of thank this you. team. You've been dodging, <laughs> but I'll keep on finding you and bringing you here. Uh, uh, it has been a great day. May, uh, may, the, may the blessed soul of uh, Joe Rico stay with the angels in heaven. Mm -hmm.